If I was to actually Photoshop it like this, it would take me hours. Photoshop just got a massive update, and with it a brand new feature that lets you take summer photos and turn them into winter photos and spring photos and turn them into fall photos and everything in between. Needless to say, it's very impressive. So why am I out here and not back at my desk showing you? Well, today I'm in my favorite photo location, taking winter photos of the same photos that I took only a few weeks ago when it was fall, and then a few weeks before that when it was summer. I'm gonna try and match them up as close as possible and see just how good Photoshop is at taking something that's lush and green and turning it into something that's snowy and cold. Every time Photoshop adds a new feature, I get more and more worried that somehow I'm gonna be replaced. On a daily basis, I do either photo editing or architectural visualization inside of Photoshop. And with some of the new sky tools, the digital retouching to kind of smooth out skin and change your expression. And now with the ability to change a landscape from one season to the next, the tools are just getting more and more crazy. So here's a photo I took back in the summer and I've got a comparable photo next to it that was taken in the winter in the same location. I wanna grab this one and see if Photoshop can actually produce a believable result out of the summer photo. So I'm choosing this snowy landscape. I mean, it looks snowy. It's not quite like the reference photo. I wonder if we change this and up the winter. If I was to see this, I would believe that maybe somebody painted it. This isn't too bad. Again, very painterly. Maybe if you were to export it and like brush it in in layers on top of your existing image, it'd be a bit more believable. I would definitely do a, an adjustment layer to reduce the amount of blue. <laughs> There's Photoshop's interpretation of winter. Okay, believable. Okay, now for this next one, I've got a drone shot done in summer and I've got almost the identical photo here. So I wanna see if it does any better with the drone shot. Okay, this one's less than ideal. Yeah, looking at the drone shot closely, there's a lot of weird things going on. Like even in the details here, it almost looks like it took a photo of a side of a mountain and tried to paste it on top of the drone shot. I mean, that just looks great. And then this is like, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna try this one again, but one thing I noticed is that on the side here, there's this option to add a custom image. So I'm actually gonna feed it the same image that's done in the winter and see if it's smart enough to figure it out. Maybe that's giving Photoshop too much of an advantage. Okay, so it definitely does a better job. It's just dropped a whole whack of snow on them. Now I'm curious if I flip this around and try to make the winter scene summer, if it will work any better. <laughs> it just put <laughs> grass on the road. If you need texture that's believable that you're then gonna brush in, this could work. It looks like it added a waterfall. I mean, this is such a demanding task. I would never wanna actually Photoshop this. I mean, the results start to look better when you brush in the AI adjusted photo on top of the original photo. For architectural rendering, I definitely see this being an application. It looks like a first year high school student's attempt at Photoshopping the scene. If I was to actually Photoshop it like this, it would take me hours. It's just, it's not gonna get that photorealistic appearance that maybe I was originally thinking I could get. Now these two photos, this one taken in summer and this one taken in fall are very close with some basic hue and saturation adjustments. Arguably you could take the summer photo and turn it into fall very easily. Let's see what Photoshop can do. I'm just gonna blast it 100% to autumn right away. It's added a whole bunch of tree texture when all it really had to do was just change the colors. In this case, it could be highly, highly simplified. Like this just looks like a bunch of sheep's wool. Not as convincing as I thought. Now this photo I actually did a tutorial on a few months ago. And if you wanna see how I edited this one, there'll be a link up here. Up here? So it totally annihilated the two people. Kind of removed all of the leaves, which I guess makes sense. If you're assuming that the leaves fall in the winter, this would be accurate, except for the fact that these are evergreen trees, so they actually wouldn't. Pumping the winter up all the way didn't really seem to add any more snow. All right, let's try autumn. 
Okay, this one's actually not too bad. It actually went and added some leaves on the ground and the textures up here are actually pretty believable. Like there's the original, you know, it's a 20 megapixel photo and it's kind of just, we thrown some textures in on there. From far away, yeah. The one thing I really like about this is the way it's done the ground textures. I think not only are they believable, but if I was doing like a 3D rendering for architectural visualization and needed to change the ground plane, instead of having to go find textures on the internet, I could actually do this and then brush that in to make my life way more easier and save a bunch of time. So these two photos match pretty well. This one being the winter one and this one being the summer spring one. It totally annihilated the bridge. Yeah, and the preset just makes it look more blue. Really what this preset setting is for is if you have a certain color that you're going for. I find that with the landscape, if you have some weird subject like the bridge, it doesn't really do a good job, but I'm curious to see how it's gonna work on this train photo. Okay, so this train photo actually did a decent job. Interesting, so with a reference photo, it seems to have done worse. This doesn't really work. This kind of works, but I actually like the results better without the reference image. Yeah, this one's not doing it for me. I'm gonna mix this up with one more photo. I've pulled up a rendering that I did in my architectural thesis project, and you can see here the trees that are in this image were actually summer trees that I then photoshopped to make them look orange to match kind of like the more fall setting. I'm gonna see if we apply one of these neural filters and convert this to a winter scene if we can actually get something that's believable. Right off the bat, it's done a pretty good job at the ground textures. The buildings, it has totally destroyed them. Uh, and the trees, I don't know why it made the trees red. It's, it's, it's a good start. One of the things you're asked to do all the time in architecture and 3D visualization is to show a building in multiple contexts, whether that's in spring and in fall or in summer and in winter to give an idea of how the building is being used. In this case, you could potentially save a lot of Photoshop time by just throwing on a neural filter, but I still wouldn't rely on it for the whole image. I mean, you can just do what I'm doing now and brush in specific portions of it if you're really trying to get that wintry look for your 3D visualizations. Anyways, this is an interesting tool. I don't know if I'm gonna use it as much as I would use some of the other features like the photo skin retouching. With the results we're seeing today, I'm a little bit less worried that Photoshop is gonna be replacing my job. I think it's a good start. There's a lot of work to kind of get these to the point where they're a one-click done feature. If if you wanna see another example of some of the neural filters, I did a video previously using some of the face features and went through how you can actually manipulate your face to make you look like you're smiling or you're sad. The best part of those features was actually the skin retouching, which did a really good job of smoothing out textures instead of having to do something like frequency separation, which is otherwise very time consuming. Anyways, if you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, go ahead, leave a comment or give a thumbs up. That tells YouTube that you felt like this video was worth watching so that it recommends it to other people. And until next time, take care.